It's Halloween, that time of the year in which strangers giving candy to kids is totally okay as long as they're wearing a costume. So let's see how a shower and some chocolate syrup changed the face of horror films for over two decades. This is Film Story. The 60s were a time of social change in the United States, which brought about a change in American movies too. Influenced by the effects of the Vietnam War and civil rights conflicts, films became more violent and sexual. This was the beginning of what is known as post-classical Hollywood, with movies like Bonnie and Clyde, The Wild Bunch and Easy Rider leading the way. Without this first break of films, classics like The Godfather or A Clockwork Orange may have never happened. This was also a time of big change for horror films. The classic era of horror was marked by the monster movies made by Universal, such as Frankenstein, Dracula, The Mummy, or MGM's Freaks. No, not those freaks, that's better. But by the time the 60s arrived, Alfred Hitchcock helped change everything. Psycho and the Birds showed a top director making two of the most classic and unforgettable horror movies. Though these movies were still part of classic Hollywood, he started showing that monsters could be real, everyday people, thus leading the way to the revisionist era of horror. Enter George A. Romero and Roman Polanski. It was the year 1968 and two of the cornerstones of revisionist horror were released. Made with a small budget of $114,000 and earning over $30 million, Night of the Living Dead is the origin to everything we know about zombies today. It was the first time that zombies were depicted as reanimated cannibals. While older horror movies were set in gothic castles and extravagant labs, the new trend localized the action right at the doorstep of middle-class America. So if you love The Walking Dead, you now know who to thank. On the other hand, Rosemary's Baby began a cycle of horror flicks related to religion and the occult. Polanski shows us once again that danger can come from people as regular as one's own neighbors. Other great movies from this subgenre were The Exorcist and The Omen, which turned evil into the shape of small children. What is interesting about The Exorcist is that it took the horror genre into mainstream cinema, finding a broader audience, even earning 10 Oscar nominations and becoming the first movie of its genre nominated for Best Picture. Another great addition to this category was Brian De Palma's Carrie, based on Stephen King's first novel. King would become a key figure in the evolution of horror films, having many of his books adapted for the big screen. Here's Johnny! <laughs> but if there's one thing that Psycho influenced was the standardizing of slasher movies as a key subgenre of horror. The 70s brought fame to serial killers of the caliber of Letterface and Michael Myers. This decade became the golden age of slasher films with more blood and screaming teens than ever seen before. Though these two were made with a very small budget, studios jumped on the bandwagon and backed numerous films that copied their style, like Friday the 13th and A Nightmare on Elm Street, plus the million bad remakes that came with their box office success. Horror is still evolving today, from adding elements of science fiction and psychological thrillers to making the audience believe the story they're watching actually happened. Who knows what horror will bring next? If you're interested in this topic, you should definitely check the articles I linked in the description box, as well as the list of movies I've shown. Have a scary Halloween! And the census taker once tried to test me. I ate his liver with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. Bye. Come help me! I need to get out! Mom?